All right, hello and welcome to this new What's New in Anthropology webinar series. This is the first of many more to come. We will have a virtual event like this uh, every few months to recap uh, new features and improvements we have introduced into NTARC. Uh, before we get started, just a quick uh, introduction of your presenters today. My name is Sashi Sutambaram, uh, and I'm part of the applications engineering team here at NTOP. And I'm coming to you live from Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, and with me, I have my co-host, Gabrielle. Yeah, hey, hey, everyone. My name is Gabrielle Phelan. I'm also on the application engineering team, and I am coming to you live from New York City. Awesome. And I also want to give a quick shout out to Yuki, our producer in the background making everything look awesome today. So thanks a lot, Yuki. Um, you know, the product and engineering team here at NTOP have been very busy bringing you new features and capabilities to improve and accelerate your design process within NTOP. Uh, just this year alone, we have introduced anywhere between 50 to 100 new features, tools and capabilities. Um, as you can imagine, it would be impossible for us to show every new feature in this webinar. Uh, but Gabriel and I have picked out a few to show you in the next 20 to 25 minutes. Uh, and after that, we'll have a 10 minute live Q&A session. So please submit any questions you have uh, in the chat box and we'll be happy to answer them uh, at the end of this uh, webinar. Um, if you are interested to learn uh, more about all the new uh, features, tools, capabilities in NTOP, uh, be sure to check out our release notes uh, where we document everything. Uh, and you can find that at support.anthropology.com. Okay, so let's not waste any more time. Let's jump right into it and um, go ahead and share my screen here. So first up, we have an exciting uh, new enhancement to the NTOP uh, notebook layout. You know, as we add more and more uh, blocks to the notebook, it can be a bit challenging to navigate it, right? Especially if you're looking for a specific property um, uh, to, to make design changes or properties that are nested within um, uh, different blocks, um, it, can be, it can be challenging, right? So um, we've changed that in NTOP version 3.32, uh, we introduced the notebook outline, which is this icon right here. So if you click this, uh, it brings out the, uh, the outline where, um, it, it, where, your, where the users like yourself uh, can see the high level blocks that are used within your notebook. So for example, if we select this imported bracket block, uh, it actually highlights that block within the notebook. And even more so, it shows you all the parent and child relationship between uh, that, uh, that primary block and all the blocks that are nested within that primary block, right? So for example, if we look at this implicit bracket, 
block. And if you take a look inside of it, we can actually see that imported bracket uh, uh, block as part of that implicit uh, uh, bracket uh, block right here. Uh, so this actually makes it very easy to navigate uh, all the different blocks uh, uh, within your notebook. So now not only you can click through all the different options here, you can also use your uh, use the search option here, right? So uh, let's say if I go ahead and type in uh, force, we can actually see uh, uh, all the different hits that has the word force in it, right? So if I just go ahead and click this drop down menu and I click on this uh, FE force, it brings me directly to that force block that is nested within that boundary condition uh, block uh, right here, right? So this actually makes it very easy for you to go in and make changes to this block, right? So for example, especially when you're running simulation analysis and you wanna uh, start testing out different uh, uh, force conditions, you can just come right into this outline uh, and find that, that force block and, and make, your, uh, make your changes uh, very easily. Now, in addition to outline, um, when you select on this outline uh, icon, it also has this import tab right here. So just a quick mention, right? So import right here uh, enables you to create uh, new custom blocks right away, uh, right within uh, this interface. And you can also select import block right from here as well. So it makes it very easy now to navigate uh, custom blocks uh, within this uh, outline as well. So coming back to outline, now if we if we take a look at uh, all of our you know different inputs here, uh, specifically simulation, um, we've also added um, a lot of enhancements to improve the post processing uh, of simulation within an anthropology. So I'm actually going to use this uh, this outline to find my simulation analysis. And you can see here when I select on my static analysis and I toggle uh, toggle the visibility on, we can actually take a look at that results. I'm actually gonna hit I so that it just brings this results right up. And in the, um, the HUD display of my simulation, you can see that we've added a few new tools here. Right, so one of the tools that we've added is the min and max, right? So if I go ahead and click on this min and max, right away it will display uh, the minimum, the maximum value tagged in red, and the minimum value tagged in blue for the result that is on display, right? So if I just go ahead, turn this off, and I switch this to, to my stress result, and I select on my min and max. Uh, it brings it uh, right up. So that's actually very easy now for you to uh, identify where your max and mins are uh, and, and, and start to identify your deltas uh, within your simulation results. Um, now taking post-processing uh, a step further, uh, we have also added uh, the probe tool. So if you select this icon right here, and you hover over your model, you can actually get real time uh, values of uh, the, the uh, simulation result that it is uh, uh, set to at that, at that time. So right now we are showing stress. And as I hover over my model, uh, it automatically tags to the nodes and it's displaying the value of that node. Um, now, taking this one more step further, we can actually even just right click and add that probe. So now that value actually is tagged and stays there um, until at which point, if you uh, just uh, wanted to delete it, you could just delete all of your tags um, in, in your model. Now, a couple other things I wanted to touch on with the simulation post-processing enhancements, right? So now let's say, for example, if you have more than one simulation and if you wanted to do some comparative analysis, um, we could actually do that very easily now using this dropdown. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm going to uh, duplicate this block. You can see that 
it creates a, a, a duplicate of this simulation. And I'm going to do a, a quick comparative analysis where I'm going to change the um, material and I wanted to see what the change in, in results uh, would be. So let me just uh, go ahead and turn off that pro. And having both of the simulation turned on and dropping this down right here and switching between my results, you can actually see my max value is changing as I toggle between the different simulations. So this actually enables you to do comparative analysis between simulation very quickly. Uh, so this really you know, works well for things like uh, single boundary conditions, materials, uh, uh, things of that nature. One more uh, nice little nifty tool that we've added uh, to this uh, simulation HUD is the ability to change your um, units on the fly, right? So if I go ahead right here, and say PSI, you can see that all of my values update right away uh, to show the, uh, the, uh, the new values in PSI. All right, so we are flying through this and we've already shown you uh, a few new enhancements. Um, couple more things that I wanted to touch, actually just one more thing that I wanted to show you. Um, We've made an improvement to our simulation glyphs. So glyphs are, uh, so for example, uh, this right here, these are uh, our glyphs, right? So it could be your uh, indicator of your boundary conditions within your simulation analysis, right? So for th in this case, it is the arrow that shows the direction of, uh, of how the force is being applied on this bracket, right? So right now it's kind of small. It's not very easy to see. If you go, if you navigate into your settings, display, and where it says boundary condition, you can actually increase that value or even decrease that value if you want, if you wanted to clear up the space uh, to very, very easily now see the arrow, the direction, and how that boundary condition is being applied. So just improving some visualization. Uh, and adding that, uh, you know, that added productivity uh, to improve your, your workflow. So, so far, we've shown you some really, really exciting uh, capabilities um, in just being able to easily navigate the notebook now, right, as your models become more and more complex. Uh, you don't have to now search through your notebook, right? You can just use your outline and, and find what you need to find to make those design changes and, and work through your design iterations. Um, what do you think, Gabby? What do you think so far, everything I just showed? The notebook outline is one of my favorite new additions to MTOP. Um, I think you'll find that the main theme of this, this webinar today is usability improvements. We're really looking to reduce the amount of clicks you have to make to navigate through your notebook, to create your workflows, and spend more time doing the more challenging things rather than just trying to find a variable. So um, a lot of cool stuff, and I'm excited to show what I have today. So I'm going to start sharing my screen now. The file will look very familiar. And yeah, again, really usability. A lot of the focus has been improving areas within the HUD, within the notebook, um, and saving you time. So for example, another new feature that we brought in is this whole concept of new variable value. So if we go back to our simulation, you can see I have this point map, I've located the max value, I've located the min value, and I want to use those values. I've I made them variables. We're familiar with the idea of variable creation, but then we use those variables in downstream instances. So we've now added this capability for users to quickly view the value of a variable when it's instanced in what we call a chip downstream. So for example, if I open up this field that I made that utilizes that stress field from the simulation and also that stress min and stress max, um, you'll find that when we start hovering over these variables now, we can actually see what value it's grabbing. So this is something we weren't able to, it seems like a small improvement, but again, saving you time rather than maybe going back, searching in your or outline or going to the section and say, oh, what was my stress max or stress min? 
we can now hover over those variable chips and easily identify that. So um, this feature is available for scalar, as we can see here, temperature, integer, vector, and point variables. Um, these are the types that we're starting with, but going to expand this to other types soon. Okay, so the next one, custom block creation. Sashi hinted at this one. Um, it's now exists within the outline. Um, in past versions, you've seen when you have imported a custom block, you'll find that this icon will have will indicate the number of imported blocks that you've created. So now when you select this icon, the new place where they'll sit is in the outline within that second tab. And here you'll have all the, the list of all the custom blocks that are in your notebook with the option to create a new custom block. So that's another feature. Before with an end top, you had to open up a new instance, you created a workflow, you designated the inputs, the outputs, you closed it, you saved it, you saved it so to some location within your within the, maybe your desktop, and then you opened a new instance of NTOP, you uploaded that custom block, and then editing also required you to go back to the old one, edit. There was a lot of steps that I just described there and we made it much easier. So let's show you. I have a custom block here, shell and fill workflow. I can go search for it in my notebook. You can see that the custom block has this icon, this little double box icon indicating that it's a custom block. So when I grab that custom block, we now see the, the, the workflow that I've created. So let's start giving it some inputs. This is all familiar stuff for us. Um, we're providing a shell thickness. We'll give it a unit cell. Let's do body centered cubic, cell size here, and then a lattice thickness. And then we let that workflow run. All is great. Typical shell and fill workflow. Weight, lightweighting application. Um, but let's say I want to kind of kick this custom block up a notch. Um, let's actually use these fields that I've created. Right now, I can't just drag these fields into my block because the, the data types aren't correct. I have scalar data types here and for lattice thickness and shell thickness, and I need to change it to a field. So with this new enhancement with an NTOP, we can now modify this really easily. I can select my custom block, I can right click and open block. So what this will allow me to do is kind of open up the hood of this block and see what it contains. So this, I can now see my inputs that I designated, my workflow and my output. And now I can quickly start making edits. So instead of a, a scalar sh shell thickness or a uniform shell thickness, let's turn this to a field. You see the icons changing. Let's do the same thing for lattice thickness change it to a field. I've made my changes. Now to see those changes unfold in my notebook, all I have to do is press back. I get a prompt that says, hey, this custom block was changed. Do you want to add it to your notebook? Yes, I do. It pops up right underneath my old custom block. And as you can see, the icons are changing. This now accepts, as you can see, with this new variable value, I can hover over and say, hey, what is that data type? It's a scalar field. My lattice thickness now accepts a scalar field. And now I can start applying these new fields. So let's use my variable shell. Let's use this graph unit cell here. We'll use the same cell size. And then we'll use my lattice thickness variable. Once that goes, we see, boom, there it is. We have our shell and fill workflow, this time using fields from simulation and that whole field-driven design concept. You always hear us talk about it on topology, a lot of power there. So shell and fill workflow, um, the custom block creation, the editing, we're staying in one place. We're saving clicks, we're saving time. Really exciting stuff there. All right, so next. Um, really just the usability, kind of what on top looks like, a lot of areas of focus up here. Um, typically within end topology, we always encourage working in medium resolution. You're getting quick feedback from the rendering, um, but and you're getting a pretty good vi visual of your part. But there are some times where you want to get kind of a close-up, high detail image of your part. And we've always talked about precise render or high resolution rendering, where you can go view uh, precise render or do a shortcut key, control H. So historically, this has always been used for external images of our part. 
we've never been able to say, I want to actually look at the inside here and let's look at the section cut. And I want a precise render that. We, wouldn't, we weren't able to do that before. Um, well, times have changed. I can now actually precise render a section cut, get a nice visual of what's going on in my, my internal of my part. And um, uh, really cool visualizations feature. Again, keeping a medium resolution, making you go fast, but then giving you the option to really precise render your part there. Okay, lastly, context search. What does that mean? Well, context search is this new feature we've enabled to really, again, reduce moving of the mouse clicks, um, searching, and this ability allows you uh, users to add blocks to their notebook very quickly. So it's really um, allows users to build their workflows more quickly and to explore block combinations. So to enable context search, you'll see that whenever you click a block, this plus icon shows up. When selecting that, it now kind of extends out a dialog, dialog bo block box where you can add any, well, any compatible block. So it'll only list the blocks that are actually compatible um, for this, this shell and inflow workflow or this body. So in this case, um, what, what do I want to do here? Maybe I want to send this out to manufacturing. Maybe I want to mesh my implicit body, implicit body here. Well, I can scroll down and find mesh from implicit body, or I can just start typing in mesh. And then once the keywords, I start typing that keyword, you'll see it show up in my little drop down menu. I select that, and my shell and infill body or that block automatically gets put in the input where it should be in the block that I've brought into my notebook. So as you can see, the body that I'm going to mesh is the body that I use that context search in. And now all I have to do is give it a tolerance, let it run, and then I'm off to the printer. So time savings, a lot of cool features, um, editing custom blocks, the, the new variable value, precise render, um, lots of really cool UI usability, visual additions to MTOP. And um, still more to come. Again, just scratching the surface here. So Sashi, um, pretty cool stuff within the notebook outline, within the just like keeping everything in one place, which I think is really exciting, not having to go into a new and top file. Um, what do you think? Is that is that some would you would that save you some time there? Yeah, I mean. I mean, ultimately, it's you know, it's it's the it's the same workflow, but we just made it so much more easier to navigate existing workflows, right? So, like for you know our users that are that are using Antop today, it's not going to be you know something that they're going to have to spend time to learn. They can just really just start using this this you know this productivity tool and get so much out of it, right? I mean, and like you said, you know, these are just small changes, but it have it has huge impact on uh on your day-to-day -day workflow right especially if you're you know using ntop as part of your uh, product development um so gabby one more thing i wanted to show um and let me go ahead and share my screen here um our product and engineering team have also spent a lot of time um improving our lighting effects that has essentially improved the visualization experience in anthropology. Uh, and you know, for those of you who are, who are already on the latest version, you probably already see this effect. And if you're not on the latest version, you have to get on the latest version because you can just see the difference between the before and after effect. So if you look at that first heatsink coupon, you can see how crisp all those edges look now. It's so easy. Uh, it's so it's it looks much much better, right? And in 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 the in the uh, second image here in the middle, you can actually very very clearly see how that geometry is is defined. Um, and you know, especially when you're using this for things like architected material, you can actually now very very easily see how you know how the geometry is is being created and 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 how it's being dispersed within your existing geometry. So. Again, you know, this is this is uh, uh, a, a you know a, a small change, but I would say a, a, has a huge impact on your on your day to day 
uh, product design, just being able to visualize and see uh, how much, how much, you know, how much nicer uh, all the models look now. So with that said, I'm going to stop the share and um, we can go to our Q&A session. Um, so just taking a look here. Um, so a couple of questions in. So one of the questions uh, that we got in, um, we have, uh, I have a few ideas for NTOP. Uh, who do I speak to? That's a really good question. Um, some of you may not know this, but a lot of our enhancements in anthropology actually comes from customers, comes from you, comes from the user, right? So we definitely want to hear from you. Um, and there's a few different ways you can reach us, right? So every customer at Antop has a customer success manager, right? Uh, so you can definitely reach out your customer success manager and discuss with them ideas uh, of uh, uh, potential features that we can add in Antop, maybe things that you've seen in other places and, and, and uh, features that you really like. Um, or you can always just submit a support ticket. So our support team uh, is part of our product team. So that goes right to the source. Um, so yeah, we would love to hear your ideas. Um, Gabby, why don't you take the next question? Yeah. Okay. So another question. What are some other new features that have been added that you weren't able to cover in the webinar? Um, so a lot, again, just scratching the surface. Uh, the today's webinar was definitely focused on more the usability aspect, um, but we're continually making improvements to the software. We're a very fast moving company with no intention of slowing down anytime soon. So I would say probably the biggest to note would be as, um, I mean, we've launched the new latticing tech uh, a little while ago. And so kind of people are getting their feet, their feet wet with that, which it's really opened the door and set the foundation for a lot of uh, enhancements that we've made on top of that latticing tech. So um, custom unit cells, being able to create that. I mean, we have a vast library of those lattices with an topology, whether they're surface-based lattices or beam-based lattices or foams. So there's a lot at your disposal, but on top of that, um, maybe you're creating your own unit cell that you want to bring into NTOP to place on a CAD face or infill a volume and put it on a rectangular cell map, a cylindrical cell map, a spherical cell map. Um, that's all really possible. So custom unit cell, graph from line segments. Um, graph from line segments, kind of an interesting, it, it's, it should, essentially allows you to do like things like perforations really quickly. It's like instantaneous. Um, so that's another cool one. And then probably the last one to note that we've really built on the new Lattice Tech is Warp Cell Map to Body, which is a really cool one. Um, we've always been really good at infilling lattices or infilling volumes with lattices. Um, but when you get kind of like complex kind of surfaces or structures and you want to have a lattice that uh, doesn't have any floating beams or has clo closed beams and uh, no kind of segments shooting out anywhere and you want to conform perfectly to a volume. Um, there's been workarounds to do that pop in the past in topology, but we now have a new block called warp cell map to body that allows you to take that infill volume um, or infill lattice and completely warp to the surface that you're the volume that you're giving it. So um, just a few that we built on like kind of the building blocks on top of the this new latticing tech foundation. And um, actually, my, this might be a good segue into another question that came in. Uh, Sashi, what is the next big thing in NTOP is working on? And can we get a sneak peek? <laughs> um, <laughs> no sneak peeks today. But I mean, I would say, you know, I think we've mentioned it a couple of times now. And we brought it up in a few of our blog posts. But really, the, the big ticket item that, we, that our product and engineering team is working on is our field optimization uh, tool. So the, the, our Field optimizer uh, is, I think it's going to be a game changer, right? It enables you to uh, automatically um, um, create your geometry, create your lattice, latticing based on some inputs, right? So, uh, and goals. So, for example, if you want to uh, minimize uh, displacement or uh, minimize strain. Uh, and you have inputs as part of your latticing and as well as material inputs, uh, it will actually generate that material field for you. 
so that's really all I can say right now. Um, I'm super excited. I've seen some, I've seen some sneak preview of it. I think it's, you know, it's going to be one of a kind. Uh, literally nobody, no other software on the market has this, has this technology. So we are super excited about it. Uh, so yeah, keep an eye out for that. Uh, it should be coming out sometime this year. I, I would say it's, it's, it's going to be very exciting. stuff all right so um yeah i think so that's it that's all the questions i had uh we had um unless uh gabby is there any other questions just a, one more question so how often i think you said this at the top of the the webinar but how often should we be expecting to release these what's new webinars yeah, so the, the plan is every few months, right? I mean, I think Gabby, you mentioned that we are very, very fast paced. And honestly, I was I was trying to find out how many new features we've added. And the range I got was between 50 to 100, right? There's, there's, there's so many new features that we release every two weeks. So uh, the plan is every few months, we'll, we'll have a, a virtual event like this where we'll recap uh, a, a few selected uh, enhancements. Uh, and then, of course, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, you can always go to our release notes and we'll have everything that we add in the software uh, documented in there. All right. So with that said, um, if you have any questions, any follow up questions, um, we will be displaying our email shortly. So you can email us to get in touch with us. Um, if you are a current customer, thank you for being a customer. And uh, if you're not currently an NTOP user and you want to learn more about NTOP, you can go to our website, antopology.com, and you can request a demo. And we'll be more than happy to get in touch with you uh, just to learn more about your applications. Uh, so one more thing, next week, Antopology will be at Formnext. So if you will, if you will be at Formnext, please stop by our booth and say hello. We'll be very, very happy to, to meet you. Uh, so that's it from us. Signing off. Thank you very much. And Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Bye.